All right then my friends, so typically when we're creating a website, we'd like to at some point reach out and grab some data from somewhere to make our site more dynamic and show data to our users. And this could be from some kind of REST API on your server or some other third party API or a service like Firebase going direct to the database. Now we'll be hooking up a React app to Firebase in a playlist coming up directly after this one. But for now, what we'll do is just use a third party REST API to get some fake dummy data from. And that API is called JSON Placeholder. So I'll leave this link down below so you can go and check it out. But essentially what this does is give us access to some REST API endpoints to receive some dummy data. So for example, if we type in this or try to fetch this, it's going to grab us a to do in JSON format. Or if we grab this right here and then follow it up by any of these things down here, posts, comments, albums, etc., we get that data. So as an example, let me just paste this in here and then go to forward slash posts and you can see all of this data right here. That's what we'll be getting back in JSON format. So this is the URL right here that we're going to be using to grab some dummy data for our application and we're going to display that to a user in a presentable way. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to use an HTTP request library called Axios. You might be familiar with that already, but to do that, we're going to have to install it as a separate package. So new terminal and then CD into the current directory, which is pokey times. And then we'll say NPM install Axios. All right then, so now we have Axios installed, we can now use it inside this component to go out and fetch data from an external source. Now then, how do we want to do this inside this component? Well, if you remember back to when we talked about lifecycle hooks, I said that a good place to go out and get external data was in the lifecycle hook component did mount. That is when the component has then mounted to the DOM. So we're gonna use that lifecycle hook to go out and grab data using Axios. Now, to do that, to use a lifecycle hook inside this component, we have to convert this component into a class-based component because functional components cannot use lifecycle hooks. So, first of all, let's import components from over here and then get rid of this stuff and say class home extends components like so. So now we've turned this into a class-based component, but right here where we return some JSX, we have to embed that in the render method inside a class-based component, remember. So let's cut that and do our render method. And inside this, we'll paste that back in. Okay, cool. So let's create that component did mount function right here. Now inside this, this is where we'll use Axios to go out and grab the data. So first of all, let's import Axios from Axios. This is the thing we just installed. And by the way, we could have used fetch to do this. I'm using Axios because I just prefer it. So we could say Axios dot get, and you could use post or another method if you prefer, but we're using a get request to get some data. So right here, we're gonna paste in the URL, the endpoint that we need from this thing right here. So it's this, so I'll paste that in, and then it's forward slash posts because we want the posts. Okay, so this task right here, to go and get some data, this is asynchronous, meaning it takes some time to go and do. It doesn't happen automatically, it might take half a second, a second or more. So we don't know when this is done. We can't just go underneath this and say, okay, now we'll use the posts. This right here returns a promise. And a promise basically means, okay, this action will complete at some point in time. And when we get a promise like that, we can tack on a dot then method. And this dot then method fires once this has completed. So any code we run inside the dot then method, that will only run when we have completed this. So, Inside the dot then method, we pass a callback function which is fired when it completes, and that callback function takes the response object from this as a parameter. So we have that response now inside this function, and we can log that to the console and see what it looks like. So console.log response. Save that and check this out in a browser. And now over here, we can see all of this stuff logged to the console. So you can see we have a property called data, and this is where all the data we just received is being brought to us. 
So we have 100 posts there, each one an object with a user ID, ID, title, and other stuff over on the right. So what we need to do now is grab that data and output it to our template somehow. But how are we gonna do this? Well, I think the first step would be to create a state locally to this component, and inside the state we'll have a posts array. Now to begin with, this component will have an empty array for the posts object right here because we don't have that data yet. Then when we receive the data, what we'd like to do inside here is take that data and add it to this posts array so that then we can cycle through it inside the template and output it. So let us now say this dot set state, then inside we want to set the posts. Now then this is gonna be equal to the response dot data. Remember it was all on the data object inside the response. Now that is gonna add 100 items to this array right here, but I don't really want to add all 100. So I'm gonna use the slice method to get the first 10. So we'll go from position zero to 10. All right then, so now we've set this property of the state right here. So what we could do is cycle through that state now inside the template. So inside the render method, first of all, I'm gonna use a bit of destructuring to get the post property from the state, much like we did with props in previous tutorials. So I'll say const and then curly braces posts is equal to this dot state. So all that is doing is grabbing the posts property from the state. Now, the next thing we wanna do is check if the post has any data inside the array because when the component first starts, we don't have any data. We have to wait until this is complete. And we only want to cycle through those posts if we have data in them. So to check this, we're gonna use the ternary operator. So we'll say const and then post list is equal to posts.length. And this is gonna be either true or false. If they have no length, then it's gonna be false. If they do have length, it will be true. So question mark, then this is the stuff we'll return if it's true, if we do have posts, and then colon, and then this is the stuff we return if it's false, if we don't have posts. Remember, we return JSX for each one of them if we want to, dependent on whether we have the posts yet. So let's do this one first of all, when we don't have any posts yet. So all we'll do is write a div with a class name of center, and then we'll output no posts yet. Okay, so next up we'll do this one, and in here, if we do have posts, we wanna cycle through those posts first of all. So we'll use the map method to do that. We'll say posts.map, then inside, fire a function for each post. So we'll take that post, and inside the function, we like to return a snippet of JSX for each individual post. So return, and then inside parentheses, we'll do a div to surround all this with a class of post and also a class of card. That card class is a materialized CSS class, just gonna make things look a bit prettier, okay? Now remember, the surrounding div here, this needs a unique key property in React. And since we have an ID property on the posts that we get back, we can say this is equal to post.id. I'll show you those quickly. You see we have an ID, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to 100. Um, so we can use those for the key right here. Okay, inside that, another div with a class of card content. And that again is a materialized class to make things look nicer. Then a span with a class of card title. And then inside here, we'll output the post.title. So we have a title property on these objects over here. If we scroll across, we can see that title. We also have a body property, which is all of the text. So we'll output that as well underneath. So underneath here, do a P tag and then output post.body. All right then, so we're outputting this JSX for each individual post and we're storing that JSX array inside this post list variable. So now down here, we don't want to output all of this stuff. Instead, we'll output the post list like so. So that's either gonna be a series of this stuff or this stuff if we don't have any posts yet before it's made that request. So let's save this and check it out in a browser. And we can see now that we have all of those posts on the page, the title and the body right here as well, okay? And there should be 10 of them because we sliced that array and we used only 10 of them on the state. Now, if you refresh quickly, you should see that other message flash up this thing right here before we retrieve the posts. 
So that's when that shows. When we don't yet have the data, we show this. When we do have the data, we show that. It's very quick, but if you refresh, you might just quickly catch that little message, okay? So there we go, my friends. That is how seriously easy it is to use a lifecycle hook component did mount to go out and grab data using Axios, store it to the state, then cycle through that data in the template.